My God. Been a long day. Long night, whatever. Uh, now you see why I keep it pulled back all the time. Because I can't see anything if I don't pull it back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, we're going to do a uh, setup job on an old guitar here today. It's an old Gibson Dove, and a very old guitar, in fact. And I want to uh, give you a bunch, a whole bunch of tips on setting up your acoustic guitar. Have a uh, a look at this. In fairly good shape too, to be so old. I don't want to bang it again, anything, but. Beautiful uh, red. The finish on this guitar is cracked, shattered, like uh, my Martin is, only maybe worse than that. The top doesn't look that bad, but the back of it, the, the finish is all really in bad shape back there. But uh, you can see other than the cracks, the cracked finish, it's in fairly good shape. So, uh, we're going to set it up, just general setup job, new strings, putting on uh, Diodario EJ-17s. And I'm uh, going to give you a whole bunch of tips on uh, setting your guitar up, and uh, just tips in general, not necessarily on setting one up, but tips in general on your acoustic guitar. So let me get these strings off, I'll bring you back as soon as I uh, get the strings off of it. Initial inspection. Tip number one, you always want to put the same pin back into the same hole. Always, always, always do that because your strings are different gauge and they eventually wear out, you know, bigger places into the pins. So you want to always, you know, keep the little the little ones on the little strings and the big ones on the big strings. Always put your pins back in the same holes they come out of, okay? Always check your keys, your tuning machines. Check them, see if they're tight. They work loose a lot of times. Check these uh, these little nuts here. I'll put a wrench on those and just make sure they're snug. That's tip number two. I'm not going to count these, but you can tell if there's much play in the key or not, or how much it might be worn by jiggling the pegs. I meant to mention too on that other video, when you're souping up your guitar, another thing you can do to do that is uh, put, short, put uh, tuning machines on that have shorter pegs, okay? That allows you, when you come off of the nut here, to wind downwards toward the peg head on every string and what that does is pull more force down on your nut you know more tension down on it better sound same thing back here the higher your bridge is the more down pressure you have the better it's going to sound so I don't know there's two or three tips there also I wanted to show you inside here I've already got a mirror in there but I want to show you uh, damage to the bridge plate from the balls of the strings that's what happens, folks, over time. Hold on. A few drops of linseed oil. I'm just going to spread that out over the neck of the fretboard. And let it soak because it looks like this guitar is very, very dry. I'm going to polish the whole entire guitar up too while I've got the strings off of it. Be a good time. Clean it up. Linseed oil. It's not too awfully bad, dirty, but it's really, really dry. Look at it soaking that out, man. Wow. I'm just going to let that set for a few minutes. Linseed oil. It's the best, in my opinion, for rosewood. Cleaned up. Really nice to be so old. Uh, here's you another tip. Y'all, the old subscribers know this already, but the newcomers might not, so I'm throwing it in. Take a piece of paper 
go around your bridge and see if you can slide that paper under the bridge or not. This one will not go under there. So we're good there. Usually you don't have to check the front because if it's going to pull up it's almost always in the back. Well it is always in the back. But there's you another tip. Man, there ain't nothing better than homemade biscuits right out of the oven with butter and jelly. Mmm. Now it's always good to inspect the frets while you have the strings off of it. And uh, as I already said, I think I said, you know, you might want to inspect the uh, braces occasionally when you uh, have the strings off of it. Now, just shove your pin down in until it's snug. You don't need to shove it down in there so tight that, uh, you know, that you're never going to get it out. It's not going anywhere. You don't need to shove it down in there that tight. On this end, this is the first string, okay? So what the way I do this, I pull the string up to the next uh, peg and bend it right there, okay? And then stick it in up to where the bend is and start cranking and wind the string downwards toward the peg head. Somebody's going to need new batteries very soon. Purple. I hate these collar codes, man, that that uh, Diodario uses. It works, but it's just... Uh, and wrapping all the strings in, in, like, one pack, I could bitch about that, but I won't. <laughs> Not this time, anyway. Second string, second string. Uh, another good tip is just put the ball in the hole, okay? Put the end of the pin on the ball, shove the whole thing down in, and then you should be able to pull that string back up a tiny bit, just like that, okay? Back up here again, second string. Goes on this peg, I'm gonna come up to the third string, or the third peg. Bend my wire. I can't see the hole. <laughs> I could go on a long time about that one. And same process. Wind. Down toward the peg head. Another good tip for you. And this is uh, good for any guitar. Anytime you have all the strings off of it, okay, you're probably going to have to adjust your neck relief a little bit because, uh, you know, it's not used to having no stress at all on it. So if you got all the strings off of it like this, good chance that your uh, relief's going to be off a little when you get everything set back up. And I'm going to show you how to do that too and uh, make some points and uh, give you some more tips on that when I get to it. So I'll bring you back when I get the strings on. Hold on. By the way, third string, third peg, I pull the string up to about the end of the headstock here, bend it, and that sets me up for the keel. Had questions come up, well, what about the third and fourth strings? Well that's the way I do it. Pull it up to the end of the headstock there and put your bend in it and start winding and wind downwards always remember that do it so we're tuned to pitch i went ahead and took the truss rod cover off because i know we're going to have to get in there and i'll show you why the neck relief is a little much right now uh feeler's gauge Okay, as we have done many countless times before, we're going to do it again. I'd like to see about 12,000 here on the, around the 7th fret. 
eighth or ninth fret. Seven, eight, and nine. I check in that general area, and uh, I've got eighteen right here, and it's it's way too much. So I got in an argument with a guy about this online. A reputable guy, a man well thought of, says it's okay to tighten your truss rod with under string tension. And I said, no, it's not okay. He says, yeah, if you just go in tiny increments. Well, no, it's not okay. Never tighten your truss rod under string tension. Don't do it. Uh, let me get some 8 millimeter. Always, well, for one, this is another good tip. For one, if it's a guitar and you don't know how long it's been since that rod has been turned, you know, and you go to tighten it, man, you can strip it, you can snap the rod. All kinds of crazy shit can happen. You always, 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 under string tension, or even if it's the first time, you know, in a long time, you want to go looser with it. Now, as the way you are looking at the guitar, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, the way you're looking at it. So I'm going to loosen it now. You may hear it pop. No, it didn't pop. That's uh, the leather squeaking here. All right, I tightened it uh, about a quarter of a, about an eighth of a turn actually. Now what I want to get here is a twelve. Let me find my twelve. Here we go. I like to see about twelve thousandths relief in that thing. And we're not there yet. Lily's uh, having problems getting comfortable. So we need to tighten that rod just a little bit more. About another eighth of a turn. Check it at the seventh fret. Eighth, ninth frets. Tighten it a little bit more. What you're hearing is the neck moving around in this on that leather. That's what the funky noise is. There we go. Now we're getting into the ballpark. What's wrong, Lil? What's wrong, Q? You not get comfy? But yeah, this, I gotta loosen that a little bit more. This guy's a really reputable, well-known, well-thought-of guitar player. And uh, he said, you know, if you go in tiny little increments, tightening it won't hurt. Well, <laughs> it hasn't hurt yet, but believe me, it's going to if you keep doing that. You're going to run onto an instrument and you try to tighten it, tighten the truss under string tension, and you're going to break it or strip the threads. You know, the, that thing could be stuck and you not know it. And you're tightening against pressure. You know, we have 12 thousandths neck relief there now. Exactly. A little high on the eighth, on the ninth, eighth and ninth, but on the seventh fret, it's dead on the money. So, yeah, folks, always make sure. That especially if it's a guitar that's not been adjusted for a long time and you're doing it under string tension, loosen it first. Just enough to see if it breaks loose, okay, and then tighten it up to where you need it. Okay, now what are we going to do? We're going to check nut action next. I'd like to see about 16 to 18 thousandths on that. Hope everyone's having a Fun day, Sunday. I have 18 right here. Check that out. I set this guitar up a long time ago and it's still. Uh, that may be a little tight there, but it's 18 here. Let's just see what that is. That's a 10. And it's really tight to go in there. You may have to raise the action a little bit. Uh, we'll check that. And 
playing position as always. Four sixty fours on the low E and four sixty fours on the high E. That can come up a tiny bit. Yeah. And how do we do that with a screwdriver? Uh, another good tip for you. When you are adjusting your truss rod up here, okay? Make absolutely sure you have a tool that fits. If it almost fits or it's kind of fits, don't use it. Don't take a chance on ruining that. Get a tool that fits. That's a, a, one of the most important tips I can give, give you. Make sure the tool is the tool you need for the job. And in the end, you'll be a lot happier. I'm going to pause the camera. i got to go get a screwdriver. I've got Phillips here, but that takes a flat, so hold on. What? I love you. Had to adjust the saddle. Um, of course, I'll check this again tomorrow. All this stuff will have to be checked, and you know, as the guitar settles down. Five sixty fourths on the bass string at the twelfth fret. And 464 on the high E string at the 12th fret. So we're good. Well, I'll tune it up. And I'll bring you back and we will uh, see if it'll play. Or if I can play. Hold on. She's got that old Gibson sound, that's for sure. I went over every fret. A 1970 uh, Gibson Dove and uh, the reason I know so much about this guitar is because it was mine it used to be mine it used to be my dad's actually my dad bought it in May uh, I've got to I found the receipt in the case over there and it was in May of 1970 he bought it he paid five hundred and thirty five dollars for the guitar and the hard shell case in 1970. If that tells you anything, <laughs> what it would cost now would be. But there 
shows you a bunch of tips and a bunch of setup tricks and stuff. Uh, I know I left a bunch of stuff out. You can uh, one thing I just thought of right now. While you got the strings off of it, take a pencil and mark in those uh, in those nut slots, and that'll keep it'll help keep your string from hanging up and binding up in there. You know, and you're almost to a tuning point that you want, and then ding, and it goes way sharp. That stops that, or it helps, you know, eliminate that problem a lot. I love that old Gibson sound. It's, it's different from everything else. And this is a full body guitar too, so there's a lot of it. So, uh, I hope some of y'all learned something or something that can help you. Uh, I don't know what's coming up next. I'm getting a bass in here. I keep getting put off, but it's coming eventually. And I'll probably film that and uh, more good tips and tricks to come. So, thanks again, guys and gals, for hanging in there. Uh, thanks to the new subscribers and the old ones, all of you guys. Uh, appreciate it, man. I really thank all of you, every single one of you, a lot for keeping it here. And, uh, Watch for stuff to come. I don't know what it'll be, but it uh, could be anything on this channel. You know how that goes. A little Alice Cooper for you. Sanding. Oh. I love you too, baby. <laughs> 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 <laughs>